Today we're going to be looking at another video by the Action Lab. Specifically this video right here called, What does the strong nuclear force look like? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Check it out. Atoms contains protons that have a positive charge. We know that positive charges repel, and not just a little bit, but they repel each other a lot. For example, the two protons in the nucleus of a helium atom are repelling each other electrically with a force of about 20 pounds. Yeah, like 20 pounds is in this much. But that force is from two single protons that are about 100,000 times smaller than an atom. So this 20 pounds of force concentrated on the mass of one single proton should instantly accelerate it to around 8,000 miles per second. I've never heard someone express this unit in pounds. Fascinating, but I appreciate the approachability of the sense of scale. That's, that's very good. But they don't. In fact, the protons of atoms are held so tightly together that it's almost impossible to hit them with enough energy to make them fly apart. That's why it's the strong nuclear force, because that's how strong it is. So what is it then that's holding on to these protons and neutrons so tight in an atom? The force holding them together is called the strong nuclear force. The strong nuclear force is much stronger than the electromagnetic force, and it attracts both protons and neutrons to each other. It's the force that holds the nucleus of all atoms together. When you unleash just a small portion of the energy stored in the strong nuclear force, then the result is a nuclear bomb. If you do it in a prompt, critical, uncontrolled manner, you can also, you can also do it slowly over time and create a, make it as a, as a nuclear power plant. But this would be if you're going to release it all in a tiny, fraction of a second, then yes, that's what'll get you there. And you need very specific conditions in order to do that. But I get what he's saying. But if the nuclear force is so strong, then why doesn't it just pull everything in and make one giant nucleus? Well, it's because it's only attractive at a very short distance. This is a graph of the force between two nucleons. Notice that at more than about 2.5 femtometers, the force drops to zero. That's only 2.5 times 10 to the negative 15 meters. Yes. Also notice Very that after range. about 0.8 femtometers, the force is actually repulsive. So the protons and neutrons don't just squish down to a single point because once they get too close together, they actually start repelling each other. Yeah, you're not, it's not going to induce fusion. <laughs> so between protons and neutrons or neutrons and neutrons or anything else like that. So this is an interesting curve here. There's this well that creates a strong binding force that holds the nucleus together, but doesn't let it collapse down into a single point. So what would this look like on a larger scale? Is there a force that holds something in one place and doesn't let it come too close together or too far apart? Is there anything that creates a force field that traps another object? Well, actually, yes. There's a newly discovered phenomenon can arrange magnets in a certain way phenomenon called polarity free magnetic repulsion. I did a video on this before, go. but let me show you my new and improved device created by Hamdi Ukar and his associates. Hamdi is the scientist who pioneered the discovery of this new effect and first described how it works with mathematical precision using classical mechanics. Cool. So the result is a magnetic trap that levitates it in the air. It can capture it and hold on to the magnets, creating a magnetic potential well. Notice this attraction when it's further away, but then as I try to push it closer, there's a resistance here. Then if I push down on it. That's cool, it's this burp, it's this beautiful, perfect range you have set up. I can see that being, being like the strong nuclear force. Because of how strong it is, you don't really see the, uh, like you said, the movement is fairly quickly, like when you use the example of 20 pounds and 8,000 was it kilometers per second or miles per second, but re really, really fast. So it's just gonna, gonna hold stuff in like that. In fact, the strong nuclear force, when you have an imbalance, that's why radioactive material is a thing. It's when they, a much larger nucleus just sloughs off a big chunk. That's like an alpha particle, a little helium nucleus worth of it falls off because a helium nucleus is super, super stable. One of, one of the most stable uh, nuclear arrangements there is. Or it can 
spit off an electron, a beta particle that, that would turn a neutron into a proton. Because neutrons are a little heavier than protons and also release some of that mass energy. It could be pure energy that comes off in the form of gammas just to lower that nucleus to a less excited state. But it is a battle that happens. So this idea of these magnets having this perfect range is a pretty good example of the tug of war that is between the strong nuclear and the electromagnetic force. But if that didn't happen, radioactive decay wouldn't exist and the universe and life wouldn't exist. So many aspects of physics have that. It's, it's a reason why it's one of the fundamental forces of nature. It goes to higher than the weight of the ball. With the magnet on there, it weighs 3.44 grams. But you can see the resistive force is much higher than that. I can push on it. And it gets to around five grams here, seven, eight. I have nine grams of force. So this provided a repulsive force of nine grams. If we take a look at Hamdi's paper about this phenomenon, we can get a plot that's very similar to the plot between two nucleons. That's Attractive cool. and then repulsive. So we have a macro scale analogy of the forces inside the nucleus of an good. atom. And what's really cool is that there's a second magnet on this other side that can hold another magnet over here. So we literally start to assemble a nucleus here. We have two protons with a force holding them together in between. They can't get too close together, but also they're stably held at a distance with a strong binding force. Now keep in mind that this is only an analogy here. The forces that are holding these magnets together can be described using just the electromagnetic forces. Yeah. But it makes a great analogy for picturing a force that can be attractive, but then also repulsive, creating a stable zone that holds particles together. And here we're just looking at the strong nuclear force by itself. We're not looking at the... It's a bit confusing because here he's using an electromagnetic force to simulate the strong nuclear force, but there's also the electromagnetic force, the real one that's pushing these two protons away. Have to be, do a little bit of suspension of disbelief here, but it's still a very cool analogy. So let's go over how this device works, and then we'll talk about how the strong nuclear force actually works. On this side, you can okay. see the white stickers pointing stable. away from the rotational spin. But then if I go over here, <laughs> it points towards it. Okay. It yeah. doesn't matter which way the driving magnet is spinning, it just matters which way it's tilted. Then once it falls into the magnetic trap, neither pole is attracted to the spinning magnet and there's a net repulsive action that doesn't depend on the position and the orientation of the oscillating magnet with respect to the rotating magnet. Once it's attached, in order to stay attracted to the floating magnet, it has to be able to vibrate. If you stop it from vibrating, it gets ejected. So it follows the field by a 180 degree phase shift called phase lag, resulting in an anti-parallel alignment. This isn't possible if the field were static. This effect can be seen by anyone if you have a Dremel or a drill that spins fast and some magnets that you can attach to it like I did in a previous video here. But be careful, since these are moving at high RPMs, if you don't get it right, the magnets can fly off at high speed. <laughs> so this is a really neat phenomenon that needs to be explored more. It could have some... That in and of itself, if you don't get it right, it could fly off. That's accurate to strong nuclear because there are some elements or there are some nucleons that only exist for tiny tiny fractions of a second if you want to hear more about those sort of things i highly recommend you check out my reaction to um bobby broccoli's video on the man who tried to fake an element and the quest to obtain these crazy super heavy much heavier than uranium elements. I'll pin a comment down below for that one. Important roles to play in the description of atoms and subatomic particles, since they all have magnetic moments as well. What's crazy about this is this phenomenon isn't found in textbooks anywhere, because it's so new and it's not widely known. Interestingly enough, the strong nuclear force isn't even a fundamental force. It's actually just a residual force of the real fundamental force called the strong force. Huh. I've always heard it referred to as the strong nuclear force and strong. I've heard strong force, but I figured that was synonymous. I guess that's one thing I was steered wrong on. This is similar to how the van der Waals forces are just residual forces of the electromagnetic force. 
The strong sure. nuclear force is just the leftover force of the strong force that holds the nucleons themselves together. So the thing that holds protons and neutrons together. This might be a bit like a difference in physicists and scientists versus engineers in that, hey, gravity is not really a force. Well, for all, in, for all practical purposes, it is. That was the Einstein argument about it just being due to the curvature of space and time. Remember that protons and neutrons are made of even smaller particles called quarks. Mm -hmm. These quarks are attracted to each other through the strong force. Instead of positive and negative charges, the strong force has a property called color charge. And there aren't just two opposing charges, but there are three called red, green, and blue charges. The quarks exchange color properties through the exchange of gluons, yeah. just like in the electromagnetic force, they exchange photons. This force holding quarks together is extremely strong, over 100 times stronger than the electromagnetic force. I guess the term strong force is a bit more fundamental because strong nuclear could refer to the things to the nucleus scale when it's really even smaller than that being the things that make up the things that make the nucleus. Okay, I'm okay with that logic. And unlike the electromagnetic force or gravity, it doesn't get weaker with larger distances. It gets stronger actually. So that's why you never see single quarks. They always mm. come in groups of two or more. The strong nuclear force comes from the fact that sometimes the color charges become unbalanced in a nucleon. And this forces out a quark that instantly forms a quark-antiquark -quark pair that can exchange gluons with a neighboring nucleon. These quark-antiquark -quark pairs are called mesons, and they can be attractive or repulsive. At close ranges, the omega meson dominates and it's repulsive, but at larger distances, the rho meson dominates and it's attractive. That's why we end up with a curve that's attractive but then repulsive. It's been a while since I've looked at the quarks and the color forces and the gluons, that sort of thing. But yeah, it's interesting that this is actually the first I've heard of it just being the strong force, not the strong nuclear force. So, hey, I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> and it's cool to see something relatively new to that it's not even really seen in textbooks with the with the uh, polarity free repulsion. That's some really cool stuff. And it, it seemed to fit decently well for what the strong nuclear force is. So that was uh, that was really cool to watch. Uh, thanks again for, rec for recommending this. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.